This evening, we have the privilege and honor of inviting Sofia Gonzalez to give our reflection on her own experience and the mysteries we celebrate throughout this Holy Week. Sofia, many of you may not have seen her before because we have all been in COVID and live streaming so long, but she's been a member of our parish digitally for some time now, which tells you how long the pandemic has been going on. But we are so excited to invite Sofia forward and to ask her to share with us this evening. Thank you, Sofia, for being with us. Hello, Bellarmine community. My name is Sofia Gonzalez, one of the new faces around here since the start of the pandemic. I moved to the great state of Ohio last summer and shortly after started my PhD in neuroscience at the University of Cincinnati. Let me share what a humbling and tough experience writing this small reflection has been. I am deeply aware of how much I have to learn about God and about God's love from all of you. So I wanna preface this that I see myself foremost as a student and servant uh, for all of you. In times of blaring grief, I have found isolation or words of empty cheer, deafening and revolting. While my relative youth still offers me some patience in listening to well-meaning chant of unfounded optimism, I take great consolation in the authenticity of first century Judea as written in the gospel. We see the drama of an unjust trial, the narrative of affliction folding into further affliction, concluding in unspeakable grief and fear. We do not see an Eden, a place of peace I would find hard to recognize. The world of our crucified Christ is one I recognize well, and I assume you do too. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. Hebrews 5, 7. I'd like to think I'm well versed in the language of suffering and grief. I've spoken it myself, but I've also learned a great deal by knowing how it sounds on the lips of others. Have you lost something or someone during this painful year? Have you had time to cry loudly and plead to heaven to mourn the hope you had with the time and people that are now gone. Jesus did and does. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? Isaiah 53, seven. As I said before, I find myself in Cincinnati due to the great privilege of starting my PhD last summer. The academic milestone fuels and weaves itself thanks to the experience of suffering. I knew that I wanted to pursue neuroscience early in high school, but aspirations for an undocumented kid, like I was, are tricky things. The story of how I'm here now is a much longer story, one probably for another day, but it involved a level of fear and uncertainty that my body stored for years to come. In the midst of all of it, I was certain that no one would have thought any more of my destiny. Why would the society, world, government structures, both in the US and Mexico, folding into itself with suffering and willful isolation, care anything about me? And so I did what I could, and I offered prayers and supplications and tears. Gosh, so many tears. I ran towards starting a biomedical PhD in 2017, after I was able to return to the US, months after graduating college, six years after leaving the US in the middle of high school, and four years after my blessed return to the Midwest. Everything came to a halt weeks into the start of this 2017 PhD program, as I found myself unable to get out of bed, carefully calculating and dreading how much energy would be spent stepping into a shower, eating a meal, and not allowing anyone to know how exhausting every breath felt. I've read a description of clinical depression as being akin to attending your own funeral while being alive. The words I find myself using over and over are that of feeling like a shell. You saw me, and sure enough, I was there, flesh and bone, 
but miles away from experiencing anything in my external environment. I gained an eerily sacred understanding for those who find an answer in suicide to the unbelievable grief and anguish of depression. I returned home with family by mid-fall and grieved for what I had given up in North Carolina. Truth be told, I still mourn the potential of what could have been. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of day. Isaiah 53, 11. One of my favorite saints, St. Oscar Romero, is quoted saying, there are many things that can only be seen through eyes that have cried. I do not know if a firsthand experience with debilitating depression makes me a better student of neuroscience, but I pray it makes me a relentless one. In previous experiences of anxiety and depression, but most deeply during the bout in North Carolina, I felt and saw the people palpable urgency in advancing psychiatric medicine. It is suffering and God's grace that led me to see this need and act upon it. It could no longer be someone else's problem. It was too important. Suffering was a journey that led to my conviction of turning love and act into, of turning into love and action. I'm weary to say that all suffering leads into miraculous healing or conversions towards action. In a recent interview with Father Richard War, he answered that it wasn't suffering that led us to the knowledge of God, but that it was love. So if our suffering can help us walk into love, into God, like this passage from Isaiah, then yes, suffering can be miraculous. However, as Christ knew well, suffering is also exhausting and heavy, and it is okay if we're sitting on the eye thirst of the Passion reading. My own past and present of suffering have taught me deeply how deeply isolating pain can be and how poorly we speak the language of suffering to ourselves and with others, despite the centrality within salvation history. We rejoice with others but suffer alone. That's how it goes, right? We do not know how to suffer with others, and in turn, we fail to show up for the holiest of times for the people we encounter. We fail to join the walk of Golgotha with them. We fail to celebrate the holy season for ourselves, for others, and for a whole community. What a shame to miss a chance of joining in such holy place of suffering.